Welcome to Mid-South Nature. Today we're looking at one of the coolest amphibians, the Marble Salamander. But first, check out this cool little beetle as a youngster and as an adult. Looking under dead logs and branches, you never know what you might find. Most of the time, there's some type of beetle larva. Do you know what this orange worm and this beetle with two huge eyes have in common? They're the same creature. That's right, this brilliant colored worm called a wire worm becomes a click beetle. I'm not 100% sure if either of these are the exact larva for the eastern eyed click beetle or not, but they are very similar and will become one species of click beetle or another. The wire worm will eat grass roots as well as the roots of garden crops like corn or other vegetables and will also eat the larva of some wood boring beetles. The click beetle as an adult feeds on nectar from flowers. There are about 965 species of these insects in North America and about 9,300 species of click beetles worldwide. Those eye looking spots are actually just markings and are located on the thorax of the beetle. This species, the eastern eyed click beetle, can grow up to nearly two inches long and they use stored energy with a tough spine and a groove that help work together to make the beetle click and catapult itself into a somersault. This helps it escape danger. Listen closely and you can hear it click. Right. Ready? Let go. These beetles have sharp mandibles and can bite. So if you ever pick one up to look at it, always use caution. Sometimes after a good rain, salamanders are on the go, even during the day. And your chances of finding them in more shallow leaf litter and closer to the surface under a dead log are far greater than on hot, dry summer days when they burrow deeper and are harder to find. It wasn't long before we caught one, but only a few minutes later, I found another one. Oh my gosh, guys, we have just found an awesome salamander, a marbled salamander. This is one of my favorite creatures, and it's an absolutely adorable amphibian. Marble salamanders are in the Ambistomatida family or the mole salamander family of salamanders. There are about 30 species of salamanders in the mole family and are found only in North America. They burrow underground or in leaf litter, hiding during the day because they are nocturnal, coming out and hunting during the night. Marble salamanders have round heads and short, stout bodies and only grow to about four inches long and have four toes on their forelegs and five toes on their hind legs. The females have more of gray to silver colored markings and the males have white colored markings. The two we found this time were both females. They can be found throughout most of the eastern United States. These salamanders breed between the months of September and December depending on the location. The further north, the earlier in the year, the further south, the later in the year. Marble salamanders do not breed in water, but in low, moist areas in the forest called depressions, where the female will lay 50 to 200 eggs. These depressions fill and hold water for some time. After a few days, the eggs will hatch. She may also wrap her body around the eggs and help keep them moist. If there isn't enough water for them to hatch during the winter, they will hatch during the spring. The larva will feed on tiny, almost microscopic animals called zooplankton. As they grow, they will feed on tadpoles, other amphibian larvae, and insects. It takes the larva usually about three to six months to grow into salamanders. So you always need to have a little spray bottle or something nearby when handling amphibians because your hands need to stay moist and make sure you don't have bug spray or germex or anything like that. Any chemicals will kill the, them. So make sure you don't have any of that stuff on. Bef wash your hands before you touch these guys and wash them after. So right here we've got the field guide that we used to identify some creatures that, we, that we're not sure what they are. And this is a marbled salamander. It looks just like him except for the bands, a little bit bigger. Usually when they're younger, their bands is it is distinct, but when they get older, like that, see how bright, you can see the bands. They're more distinct when they're older. Yes. Older. So, go ahead and 
release this guy. We're gonna head on down the trail and see what else we can find. We found two species of bolsa batters right here in this very area, only a few yards apart. Both species were found in these ditches that fill with water during a good rain and have created the perfect habitat for them. They have plenty of moist leaf litter even on the hotter summer days when there's not been much rain for a while. The salamanders will find the best areas that will remain cooler and moist to survive and raise their young. One salamander's name is actually called a mole salamander, which of course is in the mole salamander family. And it resembles the marble salamander somewhat in size and shape, but it lacks the white or silvery gray bands. Instead, they have a dark gray to black body with a lot of tiny white and gray colored specks. <laughs> Another marble salamander. This one is a little bit bigger. The bands are a little bit more distinct. Sun's so starting to come out. Within, yes, that's two. What, 100 feet? Yeah. So if you're ever out in the woods and find some low areas that are filled with moist leaves, maybe a ditch or depression in the forest floor, there's a good chance there might be one of these cool little stubby salamanders. Keeping your hands moist by wetting them with chlorine-free water will help the salamander from drying out while holding it. Just remember, don't hold them for too long. And as always, keep exploring the wild and enjoying nature. See you next time.